and welcome to another spectacular cosmology segment. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash mash coming at you from the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. Let's do it. I'm excited. Let's talk cosmology. So, cosmology is the study of the origin and structures of objects in the universe, how they interact with each other. It's sort of the big picture stuff when it comes to astronomy. So, astronomy is sort of like an umbrella term that includes cosmology and it includes astrophysics and so on. Cosmology needs to tie all of that stuff together because, well, there's a lot of weird stuff going on out there. And one of the weird places is our largest galactic neighbor known as M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, the more common name, is the Milky Way Galaxy's largest galactic neighbor. We've got some spectacular imagery of it here. It's the astronomy picture of the day. And we're just doing this slow roll here to show all of the features. You can see these incredible dust lanes that are visible. And the great thing about the Andromeda Galaxy, folks, otherwise known as M31, entry number 31 in the Messier catalog, is perspective. So the Andromeda Galaxy is a great galaxy to view in various different wavelengths and through different telescopes because of the perspective. It's just in the right perspective, folks. So let me zoom out here. Now that we've shown you the galactic core and the crazy dust lanes, if we zoom back out, I'll explain perspective. Now, if we were in a location sort of over here, viewing the galactic disk from the side, it would just look like a cigar-shaped galaxy like this. It would have a bulge in the middle, but it would not even look like a spiral galaxy. It would look like a cigar shape. If we were viewing the Andromeda galaxy from perpendicular to its disk, in this sort of an orientation, it would be too bright to see a lot of the features. It would be blocked out by the active galactic nucleus. Fortunately, fortunately for we cosmologists, we're viewing M31 from a slightly angled perspective. It allows us to see into the galactic core, and it allows us to see the spiral arm features. So let's talk about that. Now this video is going to blow your mind if you've never seen it before. This is a deep, deep zoom into M31's core. So as you get closer and closer, you're going to see more and more features. And there's some weird stuff going on in the core of the Andromeda Galaxy, the same way there is some weird stuff going on at the core of the Milky Way Galaxy. Now, a, gal a galaxy is nothing like a solar system, folks. It's a lot more complex. And to oversimplify a galaxy is just some third grade logic in terms of cosmology. So this is what's going on in the core of the Andromeda Galaxy. First of all, you've got this series of red stars in this parabolic ellipse where you've got more at this at this end and less at this end and but as you get even closer in you've got a bunch of blue stars moving at relativistic speeds orbiting the galactic core the supermassive quote black hole and quote at the core of the andromeda galaxy that's what's going on in there so just to tie this together to what's going on in the Milky Way galaxy's core, and I keep this animation regularly on my screen. So normally my star field background is Cygnus, but I keep this layer there because that's what's going on at the core of the Milky Way galaxy. There are a bunch of stars orbiting Sagittarius A star, the Milky Way's galactic core at relativistic speeds. And as you can tell from this imagery here, it is not on a single plane. They are orbiting on all kinds of different elliptical planes. They've got different extremely eccentric orbits, some more round orbits, and those are all massive blue stars traveling at similar speeds to the solar wind. So relativistic speeds, significant percentages of light speed are these giant blue stars, and they're all so huge that if they were in our solar system centered where the sun is, you'd be inside of them. They're like the size of Mars's orbit. Anyway, back to Andromeda. There is a massive radio source at the core of this galaxy and probably at the core of all galaxies. And it's super obvious that there are a bunch of massive, very hot stars with a very dense and fast stellar wind coming from them. 
this is where the galactic jets emanate, folks. That is how the galactic jets are formed as those stars are orbiting at hundreds of kilometers per second. Next, let's take a look at a black hole candidate. This is entry number 68 on the Neil Gorel's Swift Bat X-ray Observatory Black Hole Candidates list. 68, GRS 1915 plus 105. It's a gamma ray source. And you can see this has got an interesting cyclicity to it because, well, it's pretty cyclic in this part. But then it goes into a quiescent X-ray state. So these are the hard X-rays from it over the past 16 years. Lower left is the past 30 days. Now let's take a look at this in some various wavelengths. So this is only bright at the high energy portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Here it is on the Chandra X-ray telescope. And you can see what's interesting about this is that it has this characteristic donut shape. It's probably giving us an indication as to the orientation of the polis. In other words, these are probably some polar jets. And this is probably a disk of plasma. As we can see, it's emanating a lot of X-rays, but then not so many in this dark interior. So probably giving us some perspective as to the orientation of this. In other words, the plasma is probably orbiting it in this fashion, and it probably has poloidal jets that are blasting out a stellar wind in that fashion, the same way the sun blasts out a stellar wind from its poles around solar minimum. Interestingly enough, when we look at it on the XMM Newton, it looks a little bit differently here. Perhaps it's because it's precessing. Keep in mind, folks, all rotating objects precess. So when you spin a top, you'll notice that its axis tilts the same way the Earth's axis tilts over about 24,000 years. And perhaps this one's doing the same thing. But in any case, that's some other X-ray data there, the XMM Newton. The first one we showed you was the Chandra. Anyway, we don't want the cosmology segment to be too long here. So we're showing it to you also in optical. And when you zoom in in optical, it is a pretty dark region of space. So again, this is a gamma ray source. We'll bring it back on the Chandra. But first, some infrared imagery from the two mass. And let's see what the heat signature is like. And there is indeed a heat signature there. So a very interesting object here, bright in gamma and X-ray, and optically dark. And here's that fantastic Chandra imagery once again, that donut shape Taurus-like appearance with some likely jets coming out of its poles. Anyway, that's today's Cosmology segment. Thanks for tuning in to the Smash News Network, Least Busted, Name and News.